G'day, and welcome to the AOS Coach sneak peek into the Echoes of Doom battle box between the Skaven and the Sylvaneth. Now, Games Workshop were kind enough to send me a copy in advance. However, I got this box literally 24 hours before it goes up for pre-order, so they haven't seen this video before it goes live. In this video, I'm going to highlight the Skaven updates that are featured in this battle box. I'm going to show you the rules for the updated Deathmaster sculpt, as well as the new points and any changes that I've noticed. And inside the box, you'll get 32 new Skaven models, which includes a brand new sculpt for a Deathmaster. You will get the Seer on Screaming Bell, 10 Storm Vermin, and 20 Clan Rats. While on the other side of the box, you will get a bunch of Sylvaneth models. You will get a brand new hero, the Lady of Vines. You'll get a Spirit of Durthu, three Kurnoth Hunters, and five new Gossamid Archers. So let's crack on and look at the good stuff. So your new hero in the box is a Death Master, which actually isn't a brand new unit. You would have had it in the old Skaven book, but rather it is an update to the Sculpt. So rest in peace, Death Master Snitch. So you are going to find a lot of commonality between the old Death Master and the new Death Master. You lost the Fighting Claw profile, but you have seen improvements across the Eshin Throwing Stars, as well as the Weeping Blades. You'll get a couple more attacks, and the Throwing Stars will wound slightly better, and you'll get a bit more damage overall. Instead of getting Exploding Sixes to hit with the Throwing Stars, you'll now notice the Death Master will gain Mortal Wounds with an unmodified Six to hit, which is going to include both your shooting and your combat profiles, which I think is a nice touch. The Death Master can still run and shoot, but the biggest difference is going to come down to how you hide the Death Master. So instead of summarizing the differences, how about I just read you out what it actually does. When you select this unit to be a part of your army, you can pick one clan rat or one storm vermin unit that is in your army and say that it's hiding in there. And when you do, you'll record this on a piece of paper so you don't have to write it down specifically in your army list. However, you will have to write it down at some point, a notebook, a piece of paper, maybe on a printed army list, whatever it might be. So this can change every battle when you're playing. But you're not going to set them up on the table, so you put them into reserve until you're ready to reveal them. You cannot put more than one Death Master in the same unit of Clan Rats or Storm Vermin. So if you take multiple Death Masters, you can put them in multiple Clan Rats or Storm Vermin units. You just can't put two or more units of Death Masters in one specific unit of Clan Rats. Now, when you're ready to reveal at the start of the combat phase, the unit is going to be hidden and you can elect to reveal it. So your opponent doesn't force it, you can choose to reveal it. There is one exception here, and that is when the unit is about to be destroyed. So if you're down to your last clan rat or you're down to the last vermin, you must reveal this unit before the last model is removed from, the, from play. So if your opponent is shooting you off the table or you've been trying to hold it off in combat and you don't want to reveal it until later, um, once you're about to remove the last model, you've got to reveal the Death Master. When you reveal the unit, you set it up wholly within three inches of the unit that it was hiding in. And if the unit was being revealed because the unit of clan rats or storm vermin were about to be destroyed, um, when you set up that death master, it will suffer one mortal wound when you set it up. Overall, you're going to find the death master will do more damage than the previous version. However, you will notice that Hidden Killers is much less versatile because it is locking you into Clan Rats or Storm Vermin. The previous version of it, I believe you could put it into any uh, Skaven Tide unit with, I think it was five or ten or more models. This one is now locking you specifically into Clan Rats or Storm Vermin, but it will do more damage. Yes, the Ren profile didn't really change, but what you because of the mortal wounds from the poison, um, you should do more damage. If I'm going to take the Death Master and I want to make the most of my death master i probably want to find a bit more consistency with damage i'm going to look for some offensive artifacts maybe even boost that up with a hidden weapon team that's hiding in the clan rats to maybe support or you know bring the attrition into that particular unit that i want to kill with the death master and my clan rats or storm vermin but um not a bad little update especially with the mortal wounds but i guess it's going to come down to how many points the death master is going to be 
There were changes on the Grey Seer on Screaming Bell, uh, also the Storm Vermin and the Humble Clan Rat. So starting off with the Grey Seer on Screaming Bell, there was a lot of changes here. You're gonna notice that it gained two extra wounds on the profile. So it now sits on 15 wounds, though the move, save and bravery has remained the same. The Warpstone Staff has now changed to deal D3 damage. In the past, it only did one damage, while the rest of that melee profile is the same. The Rusty Spike now does six flat attacks, but it will degrade over time because it is tied to your damage table. Uh, it will now hit on threes, but everything else will stay the same with the Rusty Spike. One of the biggest reductions that I noticed is it now can only cast one spell and unbind one spell. It used to be able to do two. So unfortunately, it's lost a little bit of its magic power. The biggest change to the Screaming Bell it would be the modification of the Altar of the Horned Rat. And that used to provide you Battleshock immunity while you are within 13 inches of the Screaming Bell. So this is going to hurt you, especially for those who are building around large units of Clan Rats, because you'd be able to get that, obviously, Battleshock immunity, have more than one version of that. You'd have Inspiring Presence somewhere and a Battleshock immunity through your Bell. Instead, it gained a 5-up ward, which is going to be helpful throughout the game. But it also gained a very interesting rules interaction that uh, at the start of your hero phase, you can switch from either being a wizard or to be a priest. So I'm sure that is going to make a lot more sense with the new battle tome. But essentially, each hero phase of yours, you can either make the Screaming Bell a priest rather than being a wizard. The spell, the Cracked Call, has changed. It's now a 13-inch range. It used to be 18 inches, although the rule still ch is the same, where you roll 2d6, you compare it to as if the movement characteristic, and it deals a bunch of mortal wounds depending on the dice roll versus the movement. The other big change comes down to the Pearl of Doom, and you used to roll 2d6. You now only roll 1d6. There's a lot more consistency. When you look at the table, it still has a way to deal damage. So if you roll a one, it's going to hurt yourself D3 mortal wounds and it can't be negated. So that five up ward is not going to play into effect here. If you roll a two, you're going to add six inches to the unit's movement characteristic until your next hero phase. If you roll a three until your next hero phase, subtract one from the hit rolls for attacks made by enemy units that are within 13 inches of any friendly Screaming Bells uh, for which you rolled the result. So if you have multiple Screaming Bells, it's only obviously the bell that rolled the three. On a roll of a four, until your next hero phase, you get to roll a dice each time an enemy model is picked to issue a command while it's within 13 inches of that Screaming Bell. And on a five up, that command will not be issued. So it's a great way to counter a whole bunch of, I don't know, inspiring presence, all out attacks, or, you know, faction specific commands on a five up. If you roll a five on your screaming bell until your next hero phase, after this screaming bell makes a charge move, you get to pick one enemy unit within one inch of it and roll a dice. On a two plus, it's going to suffer D6 mortal wounds. And then finally, if you roll a six, at the end of your hero phase, you get to roll a dice for each enemy unit that's within 13 inches of that friendly screaming bell. On a four plus, it's going to suffer D3 mortal wounds. So you will notice that it has changed a little bit. Everybody loved trying to summon a Vermin Lord under the old Screaming Bell, and you still can do it. In fact, it's probably gotten a whole lot easier through the ability a stirring beyond the veil. Once per battle at the start of your hero phase, if seven or more wounds are allocated to this unit, you can say that the Grey Seer is going to shatter the Screaming Bell. If you do so, you get to roll a dice. On a roll of a 1, the Screwing Bell is destroyed and you remove it from play. On any other roll, you get to add the number of wounds allocated to the unit to the dice roll. And if the modified roll is 12 or less, so the dice roll plus the wounds allocated, so we're looking for 12 or less, the Screaming Bell is destroyed. So it means that you're not going to be able to use the Pearl of Doom. It means you're not going to be able to cast uh, Crack's Call. On a 13 or more, the bell is still shattered, but you are able to summon a Vermin Lord within 13 inches of the bell and 9 inches away from the enemy. Now, if the bell was within 3 inches of an enemy unit, the Vermin Lord can be set up within 3 inches, so it can be set up within combat. 
there's obviously a lot going on here and a lot of changes and how that might impact your particular play style. But for me, the biggest impact is going to be the loss of Battleshock community through the Altar of the Horned Rat. You will get a better chance of summoning that free Vermin Lord, which is going to be awesome, but you've only got one shot at it, where previously you could keep ringing that bell hoping for boxcars. Now you've only got one chance. So you're going to want to use it and make it count. Losing a spell cast is going to suck, but I am curious to see how this switching between wizard keyword and priest keyword is going to play out and what extra abilities are in the battle tome. It doesn't actually start with the priest keyword. So when you look at the war scroll, it actually doesn't have it at all. It just gains it through an ability. So it's not like when you're selecting your army list, you can allocate curse or some other type of universal prayer to the Gracia but it does actually gain the totem keyword. I don't think it had the totem keyword in the past, which is going to be great for allocating your command points at a much further distance, especially if the Graeasia is not going to be your general. So with the Storm Vermin, they did improve their armor save to a four, although it kind of just integrated the clan shield abilities into the base profile, but it's going to be helpful because it means a Mystic Shield or all-out defense will actually help the Storm Vermin, where in the past it was just kind of a plus one to the save, so you were just kind of avoiding rend as much as possible. But your save is four now, and your bravery on Storm Vermin are now sixes, which is great. Your move and your uh, wounds are still the same as they always were. The melee profile did go down to be range one, and they have improved their to hit roll, so it's now a three plus. Uh, everything else appears to be the same when it comes to their melee profile. The champion, the musician, and the standard bearer are all the same. But they did gain a really cool ability called Elite Bodyguard. And the way it works is if a friendly Skaven hero is within three inches of this unit, before you allocate a wound or a mortal wound to the hero, or instead of making a ward roll for that hero, you can roll a dice. Now you get to add two to the dice roll if the hero is a Clan Verminous keyword. And on a four up, the wound is allocated to the unit rather than the hero but it can't be negated. So it's much like the Stormcast Praetors, if you're familiar with that war scroll, but basically these are elite bodyguards and they will take damage on behalf of that Skaven hero, especially if you're Clan Verminous. The Clan Rats had their armor save go up to a five up base save now, while their move, bravery and wounds stayed the same. Uh, they too lost their clan shields, but really it was just integrated into the base safe profile. So instead of it being a plus one to your armor save, if you have the clan shield with blah, 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 it's now just a flat five up. Again, you can benefit from ways to improve the armor save, cover, mystic shield, etc. Now the musician and standard bearer are still the same, although what has slightly changed here is that it used to be one in every 20 could be a musician and a standard bearer. It's now one in every 10. So you have to have multiple versions of the musician and standard bearer. Although the abilities have stayed the same, the melee profile stayed the same. So did the a champion rule stayed the same. But they did gain a really cool rule, which is called Seething Swarm. And at the end of the Battleshock phase, you can return D3 slain models to this unit. So this ever never-ending horde of, uh, of clan rats is going to keep coming back at the end of the Battleshock phase, not your Battleshock phase. At the back of the Echoes of Doom booklet, there is a set of pitch battle profiles. They're going to let you use the new scrolls in uh, the current game. However, if you are going to go to a tournament, you may want to speak to see how they rule the uh, the new Skaven rules. But basically, when you look at what's changed, the Death Master has gone up from, I believe it was 100 points last time. It's now gone up to 170 points, so almost doubled. Your Gracia on Screaming Bell didn't change at all, and it remains at 265 points. It's still a leader, and it's still a behemoth. The Clan Rats also stayed the same. There are 130 points for 20 models. And your Vermin Lord slightly went up. They were originally 110 points. They're now 135 points, and they are battle line. So you've incorporated the, the Elite Bodyguard rule a little bit into those points. 
So what do I think of this box for a Skaven player? Well, first off, if you are an existing Skaven player, there's a very good chance that you already own these units in your collection. If you wanted to update or get another Deathmaster, uh, you may want to wait for this to be released individually. But again, you might be a Clan Pestilence player and you don't have the Clan Rats and the Storm Vermin and the Gracier on Screaming Bell. And they might be useful to you if you're expanding out from Pestilence. But for most Skaven players, um, you probably already have these units. But if I was starting a Skaven force, um, definitely the units that are in this box appear to be useful in the current game as well as what will come up in the future so it's not like you're getting a dud buy here the death master seems that it'll do more damage through mortal wounds i like that the clan rats can return d3 models at the end of the combat phase or the battle shock and storm vermin are going to get able to act as bodyguards to a hero the biggest change for me is going to be rethinking how you might use the Grey Seer on Screaming Bell now that it's lost its Battleshock immunity bubble and it's reduced the magic potential that it used to have. Although it has gained a greater chance to summon that Vermin Lord with that once per game battle ability. So just keep an eye out and just don't be too trigger happy. Uh, but also don't kind of keep it up to your sleeve to the very end because a couple more wounds and that thing would be completely destroyed and you'll lose your Vermin Lord chance altogether. Um, I do worry about how hordes of Skaven are going to play without that Battleshock immunity. So hopefully in the book there's some type of ability to get extra inspiring presence or boost bravery somewhere because otherwise I'd be hesitant to run more than one, maybe two units at best of those larger clan units. I'd probably run multiple units of like 20s or 10s depending on how they're set up in the future. The points movements for me weren't too big. Um, I think the only exception to that rule would be the Death Master. The Death Master almost doubling in points. Maybe 170 points seems expensive. I don't know yet. Um, all I just can hope for is that there's some ways to get extra value from the uh, the Death Master, especially giving it artifacts or maybe some extra poisons or something that would do damage because uh, it will jump out, it will do some damage, but you're really relying on the mortal wound spike. It's hard for me to tell what to make of these changes until the battle tome drops, which I would expect anywhere in the next two months based on the previous release cycles. I think for me, the big movement is going to be this Gracie on Screaming Bell. It was a linchpin to the Skaven forces that used to run hordes, a lot of clan rats, and your clan rats do not have a lot of bravery, not a lot of bravery shenanigans. So you do not want to be losing massive amounts of clan rats to, to Battleshock. So let's keep an eye on that until, until the battle tome comes out. But hey, Enough from me. I want to hear from you, Skaven players, in the comments section. What do you think about this box and the rules changes? Has it impacted the way that you will be using your list? You know, things like the Screaming Bell. Has that changed the way you're going to think about Skaven? Will you be adding a Death Master to your list? Will you like the mortal wounds and the damage that it provides? Or did the points increase be too high for you to that will keep it kind of on the shelf or maybe on your painting rack? Let me know in the comment section what you're thinking, Skaven folk. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The conversation will continue over on Discord, so links down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigmar conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more fixes.